Hey, I'm Todd Brown, and I make these videos because I want you to rip on race day. Hey, what's happening? How's it going? Man? This, you know, getting prepared for this podcast. <laughs> Did you go deep on your preparation? Uh, not too deep. <laughs> right on. Hey, what's on your necklace? What is that? Oh, it's a, it's a charm. It's a one charm with my name on it. Nice. I like yeah. it. Yeah. Thank you. you. How, how you been? I've been good. I've been super nice. good. Yeah. I was thinking this time last year, we were both in Colorado, right? Yeah. I think this yeah. is about the time I ran into you guys. You were camping near Breckenridge and getting ready for nationals. Yeah. Was, right. Yeah, so it was a fun time. That was a fun time. Um, just as a way of introduction, tell us about yourself. Tell us your name and uh, anything else you want to tell you. And I have a whole bunch of things I want to ask. Okay. Um, well, I'm Landon Dendy. Um, I am a cyclist. I'm currently a junior. It's my last season as a junior. Um, I'm on a team called Weight Development. Um, going to Colorado uh, for college, Colorado Mesa University in the next month. Um, so collegiate racing very soon um yeah it's just nationals just ended just taking a little break um yeah yeah so you searched me out as i recall um on social media and this was probably three or four years ago right yeah, it's, it's a long time ago. Like, so I'm just jamming along doing my business and this little Grom reaches out to me and <laughs> you were so pro, like looking for sponsorship and it was, you were just so pro. I just, I just loved it. It stuck with me all this time. You got to uh, start somewhere. <laughs> yeah. So how did you get into racing? Like rewind, like when did you start racing? How did you get into it? Yeah. So I was just, I wasn't really doing much at the time. And my dad just pulled this heavy 24 inch wheels steel bike out of the shed. And we just go to my local trails, which is Lake Hodges. Okay. Um, and we just start riding and we're doing it pretty consistently. And then I ran into my Nike team. Well, a, a Nike team. Yeah. Um, and so it's like this massive group of kids. And so my dad started to talk to him. And, you know, next thing I know, I'm in this little like, I was riding in like a motocross kit, neon green. I was just decked out, you know. Um, and so how, how old were you at the time? I was in sixth grade. Okay. So mm, maybe like 12 is that yeah 12 yeah. years old sixth grade yeah, yeah so yeah. even pre nika right i don't think nike goes to sixth grade yet yeah and so right to nika and it was just like wow like racing because i didn't even really think about bike racing i yeah. was just riding with my parents on these random trails um yeah that's how like it the beginning started so you got into nika um, well, what team were you on down there? I can't remember. Uh, it was North County Composite. That's right. It's Composite team. Yeah. And um, how many kids were on the team? There was a lot. It was probably, for a Nike team, a lot, probably 30. Okay. It was around 30 kids. And did they just invite you in and make you part of the family? Or how, how, was, that? how was that? Yeah, it was just, they have practice. It was like every Monday, Friday, and then on the weekends. And so, um, yeah, my dad just got like the main person's phone number and I just showed up to a practice and it was just like, it was really fun, you know, just going to these practices with these kids my age. Yeah, that's cool. Um, okay, so you did Nike for a while and did you do any of the other races in the area or just strictly Nike and, races? Uh, it was a Nike race. And then once the season came quick and dirty, Mm -hmm. at my local trails and so yeah. yeah i raced that's that was one of my first races 
racing schoolboy. Yeah. At the time. That's, so that's cool. And were you having success right away or were you just getting shelled off the back? Like how, how was it going for you? Yeah, I was, I was racing the lowest category in my age and I was probably getting mid pack. Okay. Um, so <laughs> it was definitely a hard journey throughout. Um, but it was just like a lot of progress at one time. Like I started, I was kind of getting mid pack and I just started consistently riding. And for from a year, you know, I'm already almost to the highest level. Really? Yeah. And so it took, yeah, just consistent riding. And I was just, I was just getting a lot faster than I like thought. And so when you say consistent riding, like, what does that mean to a 13 or 14 or like, what was that like every day yeah about every day okay and so for about like the first six months when I did start getting riding it was probably like once or twice a week and just like just rolling over to Hodges and riding around for an hour that kind of thing yeah exactly and all right so I've met your parents and I well I'm just gonna ask you like were they just like come on man and get out there you got to do it. And were they pushing you, pushing you, pushing you or no, were you pulling them along on your journey? Yeah, it wasn't, they weren't really pushing me, mm-hmm. but they were just like more on the supportive. Like they didn't really care how I did. Um, Cause when I rode, I rode with my dad and obviously he was way faster than me. Right. And so every single ride, I was just trying to keep up with him. And so it was just like, imagine a hard group ride just like every single day okay and so yeah so i imagine that that has flipped that that role yeah <laughs> tell me about the first day you beat your dad like when you knew oh i yeah. got the number so it was funny this race in temecula uh race oc i don't know if you've heard of them um over the hump i know um but i don't know race oc uh uh-uh. Yeah, um, so it's a race in Temecula. Okay. And I was ra- I decided to race with my dad. And okay. I was like, like I bet you if I line up with you. him. Yeah. And okay. so it's like this this course is just like long fire roads. And it was just like a brutal course. But I lined up with my dad and he bet me an Apple Watch. I remember an Apple Watch Ooh. if you beat me, because he was so much faster than me. And so I was like, if you beat me, I'll give you an Apple Watch. Oh, boy. So, like, I wasn't going to turn that down. Right. And so I just, I was just so determined to get that Apple Watch. And so that's kind of like when I knew if you really wanted something in your head, you could get it. And so that race, I was just trying to ride next to him. And I ended up beating him. So, so how was, did you take him down? Did you wait till the last second or? Where I gapped him, him actually. <laughs> you, yeah, you I could gapped him. Yeah. It was on this like one super long climb. It was just so hot. But um, yeah, I just remember coming to the finish line. It was just, it was like a surreal feeling really. Cause For like, sure. I wasn't, I didn't think I was going to beat him, but it was just like, the Apple Watch got me. And so it's like this one thing, like I really wanted it. And so I just got got it. And was he dejected? How, how, did, how was he at the finish? Yeah, my mom was just screaming at the finish line. My dad <laughs> was just, you know about his the mind bet? was blown. Yeah. Did your mom talk? <laughs> that's yeah. awesome. My mom, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's cool. That's super cool. Okay, so you said something really cool right there. And I want to talk about that a little bit. You said... Um, when you decide you want something, right? And then yeah. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but talk about like what is that function of wanting something and then getting a result? Like, what does that look like for you? Um, yeah, it was just when I when I see something and I just you know watching the pro races on TV, okay, just seeing them having that success at the end because I didn't really know what that feeling was until I got the Apple watch okay 
And so that was kind of just like the start of my motivation in cycling. Cause I, I fell in love with the feeling of winning. Nice. And so I just continued that and just tried to ride with people faster than me. That is so clutch, right? To yeah. find to find a group. And are you strictly um off-road? Is it strictly mountain biking for you? Do you ride on the road at all? When I started, it was all off-road. And until last year, I got into road biking. Okay. Um, yeah, so road biking and mountain biking. Um, I I do race tiger cross here and there. Okay. Um, but yeah. Okay. You have I think the best road riders in Southern California. Yeah, it's tough. Uh, all right, not counting the crit guys in LA because they're pretty pretty impressive. Yeah. But I think for training rides, like the 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 people you can ride with down there mm -hmm. really push it. Yeah. And that's yes. really fortunate that, that you have that. So uh, okay, so you're doing the Nike. You beat your dad. You're progressing in Nike. What's the next team? What's the next team after that for you? Um. Yeah. So we just we do that for about four years. Mm -hmm. Just Nike, Nike, Nike. Um, and then I went to my first nationals. It was in Winter Park, Colorado. Okay. And so now this time I am fifteen, sixteen. Okay. Um, my last year, 15, 16, because my first year, 15, 16, got uh, COVID messed it up. Okay. Did um, you have call up points or anything like no, that? No, I had nothing. Okay. And so when I went to nationals, I was still a cat two. Okay. And so you needed to be a cat one to even race nationals. And, you and didn't so, that? yeah. And so we were there. And we just signed myself. I needed the upgrade. So I just put myself into Cat 1. And so now I'm going racing Cat 1, 15, 16 boys, highest in the country. And just like, okay. And it was nice because I didn't really have any pressure. Right. Because um, it was just like I was jumping just so far into the deep end. Right. Um, and so now I'm in high school. I'm, that was sophomore year luckily my high school had a mountain bike team it was just like a club team yeah um because that's what you race once wait, wait how did nationals go? go are you are you leading up to that oh national? yeah yeah so i'm racing for my high school in nationals mm -hmm. um i got i believe it was 30 second at nationals wow how many yeah. kids on the line uh 100 plus wow no call up so you did you start like in the back i or? was so far back okay I, I, that's the same course we raced last year right yeah yeah that that the one nice thing about that course i will say is you can move up at the start because you're on that wide road but then after it goes off that road like it's over right it's yeah <laughs> that's yeah, impressive so. that you moved up that much that that's really incredible yeah, it was I it was really fun. It was just like that was just by doing hard group rides. Yeah. Just you random. You didn't have riding. a coach or anything at that point? Uh uh. Did you have a heart rate monitor? Nothing. You're just riding I on Strava, I, I was Straving off my phone. Okay. So um, just riding on yeah. field, training yeah. yourself, working your dad over at this point. Yeah and okay so what comes next after that yeah so nationals um it's usually off season for the nationals um and so we started looking at teams uh -huh. and we saw all these teams uh the, the people that i were i was racing and i emailed this team it was an application i just submitted an application form um they they emailed me back. Uh, we had a, a Zoom call just like this. Nice. And um, yeah, we just talked and we just talked about my results and like the progress. Cause I had. Do you know what Hook It is? Hook It. Uh. -uh. Yeah, it's a 
it's kind of it's like a mini sponsorship website oh and so you submit all your local races and uh -huh. these companies give you like 20 percent off 10 percent off oh i gotta check that out yeah it's really cool yeah and so when i logged all my results because i logged my like quick and dirty results over the hump results um and so really the reason why the team took me is because the progress what team was that uh the one i'm on now currently weight endurance okay all right so were you was your interview with cody then yeah okay nice oh you know cody i i met cody at um cactus cup this year yeah oh nice yeah well yeah. you your dad connected us actually um oh and we did bags and socks and things for, for weight. Oh yeah. 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 The bags. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So I, uh, yeah. So, uh, tell me how that interview went. Like, were you intimidated? Was, was he, was he, what, what was that like? You're young. Yeah, right? I thought, I'm guessing I you just, were there by yourself, not with your parents trying to give you the answers. My parents were there. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they helped me out a lot. Um, they they just brought up this team. And I was just like, this is such a long shot. I I'm not getting on a team right now. Um, and so yeah, they we had a call. Um, and it was coaching. I was like, wow. I'm having my whole. They were talking about training schedule. You're gonna come with us to these races. Um, and so it just it sounded really interesting to me. Um, but luckily they brought me on to the team. And yeah, from their coaching has brought me up a lot. And you picked them because you saw them at nationals yeah. uh, a couple of years ago. And just, I met some of the kids, honestly, I thought they were all super nice. Um, and um, that's, that's, that says a lot about them and a lot about you that they took you on. It's, a, it's very high level racing with them. Yeah. Yeah, they're just the nicest people. Yeah. And so now you've got a training plan. Yep. And what kind of what kind of uh data did they want you to give them? What like what were you um, Yeah, so you know, they made me download training peaks. Okay. Um and then got me onto a heart rate monitor. Oh boy. Yep. It's starting to get real. Um my dad bought me a new bike. Oh, it was a, uh, it was a uh, little Scott Hardtail. Okay. And so, I just started just following my training plan. I was, yeah. How, really, what was that like for you to have structure? Was that a hard thing, or did you did you, did you like? That? I was I was really excited. Okay. Um. Yeah. It was just having something that I can like look forward to and seeing the rides I have to do throughout the week. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And did that mean most of your riding was alone then, or was most of your riding alone anyways at that point? Sorry, you cut out. Was, was most of your riding alone then? Um, it was a lot with my dad. Okay. Cause he was still riding with me. And so now about this time, we're probably the same speed. Nice. Um, so yeah, that one race where I beat him, that was just, that was really lucky. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I was, we were probably about the same speed. Um, we just started doing more local races, like over the hump. Okay. Um, I started beating his times pretty consistently. <laughs> nice. So that was pretty satisfying. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, how did your first year go with having a coach? Did your, did you, did you progress a bunch or like, were you surprised or not surprised or how did that go? Yeah. And so now I'm, it was a junior. So 17, 18. Mm -hmm. um, so my first year, 17, 18. Um, I, I did progress, but now racing the best 17, 18 year olds, I was kind of getting my butt handed to me. Um, and so that was, um, it was pretty humbling in a way. Cause you know, I got top 30 as a 15, 16, right. and I thought I was just going to do way better than that. Um, 
so yeah I, it, it didn't go that well this so, last year at nationals that you're talking yeah. about okay how, well how'd yes. it go? How'd um, it go? I did get I got 24th okay and then I I did have a really good short track result it was 12th okay and so that kind of um like that really helped me out and at this point did you were you starting to get call-up points and getting a little bit better yeah positions okay yeah um yeah so about the end of my first year 17 18 I started doing a lot better like at nationals okay. but the beginning of the year you know I just finished nationals I didn't even take a break right um because okay. I was just randomly riding at Hodges still right. um and then yeah the training schedule throughout the year um I started to go to the UCI races um so just you know Utah these local these races and um uh the united states um, so that Are was a really big jump off by yourself do your parents go with you how does that work yeah my parents do a lot with me okay um so without this whole thing it would definitely not be possible without my parents okay and so now you're in the second year of 17 to 18 mm -hmm. and oh what part what time of the year is your birthday do you have a january birthday or like an early september in the year? so you have so so you're on the younger side ever all the time right like yes and there's yeah. kids that get like it matters a little bit at that age so yeah. um and so uh how has this season gone for you yeah it's it's gone pretty well for me um this beginning of the season um i stayed on the team again um the, my training plan is starting to get way more specific just okay. by, you know, now I have a power meter. Oh boy. I have a, you know, a little Wahoo. Uh huh. Um, got, got another new bike. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Um, so now I have a, I have a, a full suspension. Uh huh. No, no more hardtail. Okay. Um, and so now we we're going to Puerto Rico. That was my first. Well, it was massive. How was that? It was wild. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty wild. It's like a whole different country. I mean, how long did you guys go for? Um, there's three races in Puerto Rico. Okay. So we were there for almost a month, about a month. Yeah. And were you? How did you work that with school? It was pretty difficult. It was um. Because a lot of people that I knew that I was racing, they were full online. Um, so I was still in person. I just had to communicate with my teachers. Mm -hmm. um, I tried to do some work on my computer, but I did have a lot to make up once I got back. Okay. Um, so that made a little more uh, things difficult, but yeah so came back how, how did you do over there do we, we stoked yeah so that? yeah so i i put a lot of work into that off season so i set the expectations pretty high for myself um mm -hmm. so i did get top 10 the first race wow okay um and then 11th and then i got fourth in the first one wow and so yeah. This is kids from the U.S., from Puerto Rico. Are there other countries there as well? Yeah, so it was like an international race, really. Um, so the people who won my category were flying. He was, um, he was from Colombia, and the second place person was Guatemalan. Okay. And then there was a couple people from France in there as well. That's pretty cool, right? All yeah. Language. What an experience for you. That, that's really neat yeah um, and so yeah th that built up my motivation you know for the upcoming races later in the year um so now out of puerto rico we go back home the uci race at vale lake oh right how'd you do yeah. i got 10th okay yeah so i was just i was just sneaking in the top 10 top 10 nice um so i was really excited for that result i saw you out there on course and 
like that course had a pretty big jump by the start finish line. Yeah. And you were just ripping it. Like I was like, <laughs> That was that was cool. <laughs> yeah, I want to say there was a baby line, and then there was the the big jump line, and it, it, it was it was pretty cool. So um, it's fun to see people at your level riding so hard and still taking time for style points. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's really cool. Um, then where'd you go after that? What what was next after Vale? Yeah, so Vale, and then it was I believe. I did a race in Tennessee. Okay. Um, I got, I believe it was eight. Nice. Um, the weather there was just terrible. Thunderstorms the night before. Yeah. Um, and then it was Arkansas. Okay. Yeah. So Arkansas is a pretty big race. Um, Arkansas. Is that in Bentonville? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Arkansas is probably one of the bigger UCI races in the u.s um because it's a lot of people a lot of people target it definitely the um people in canada um the puerto ricans come okay um so yeah there was a lot more competition into the field um and so there's a couple races at arkansas i believe i did i did two um the first one i got about 30th and so I was like, wow, okay, this is, uh, what has happened? Happen. Yeah. And so How'd that you deal was with pretty, that? it was tough. Okay. It was, yeah, it was, cause I did, I just did not expect to do that at all. Yeah. What'd you, what did um, your coaches say? My, yeah, my coaches, you know, they kind of just helped me calm down. Um, just like told me like, you know, it's this was a difficult race i have there's another race in two days you know you can just believe that you will do better in that race and so i just put that race behind me and just focus on the race in front of me Mm -hmm. um and so i came back and got 11th nice um so i was pretty stoked about that yeah and so now you know those top 10s uh and 11th a good amount of uci points Sure. So, so are you starting on the front line then at this point? Yeah. That, that so I'm, yeah, I go back and forth with um, the first start line and the second start line. That's, that's a big deal when there's 120 kids on the line, right? Yeah. And they're all gunning for it. Um, then what's next? Is Sea Otter, is Sea Otter, did you go to Sea Otter? Is that, was that, was that? Yeah, I, I went to Sea Otter. Um, it was kind of like a, a mid-season break when I went to Sea Otter. Okay. Um, so it was just like one week, kind of just recover. Yeah. Because there was a little gap in between UCI races. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, I went to Sea well, Otter. Sea Otter isn't UCI anymore because Lifetime took over. Yeah. Right. Okay. And so I went to Sea Otter and um, I haven't rode in like a week. And my my dad forced me not really forced me but um said i should race um so yeah i raced sea otter i got second oh wow killed it yeah yeah um the legs were not there but i made it work nice um yeah yeah sea otter and then um training again another uci race in wisconsin um i had another poor race in wisconsin um so it was just like the race in arkansas that i had and it was it was pretty tough because i had a lot of time to train before that race okay um so yeah after that it was it was pretty rough and you know nationals is just right around the corner by that time um and so we yeah we just I just took a, just a, a racing break and just focused on training. Mm-hmm. Um, it was really hard because I wanted to race. Um, but I probably took like a two month training block. Okay. So I did have to skip a couple of UCI races during that time. Uh-huh. Um, because nationals, nationals is so important. Right. And so now, you know, by that time we're getting 
to our nationals in Pennsylvania. Right. And that was, yeah, what, um, was a week ago? Yeah, it was last weekend. Okay. Uh, it was super hot, 90s. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, super humid. humid. The yeah. gnarliest course I've ever ridden. Because uh, rocks and ruts or what? Yeah, the rocks. It was okay. crazy. It was like a one. Imagine just doing a super steep climb and then having to go down a one mile rock garden. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I think you got the full suspension. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hard tail on that would not be possible. That'd be rough. And, yeah. and so you, you had the disappointing results. You took the two months to regroup and rebuild and how did nationals mm -hmm. go? Yeah. So nationals, uh, you had to qualify to even race the main race. Because oh, there was qualify in. Yeah. There okay, was like cool. a ton of riders. Like how early did you go out then? Um, I went probably it was like mm, four days before. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty Throw normal. Of course, a bunch. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so I I did the qualifier. You just have to kind of put in your mind like these people have been racing and you've been training. So I like that kind of motivated me a lot more. Um, and so I did the qualifier. I was in, I was in top three in oh, the wow. qualifier. Blind. Yeah. And then um, I flatted. Oh no. And then rolled into fifth. So now I have like a really good confident boost to getting top five with the flat. Right. Yeah. 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 Did you have to fix the flat or just, it was flatted. It was on, it was on the last lap. So I just rode to the finish line. Okay. How'd your wheel do? um it was it was good because you have to put inserts oh you're rolling inserts okay yeah Every, uh, mostly oh, well, everyone... let's just pause right there because uh, some people on this call will not know what inserts are so what yes. inserts are inserts so inserts provide extra cushion for your rim pretty much okay um it helps with flats um but i did i ripped my tire when i did flat um so I'm and now the the insert is pretty thick uh -huh. And so now it's it's like you're riding on 10 PSI. Okay. So it's not bad. That's why I could ride to the finish line. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so yeah, it just goes on your rim. Okay. Um, Have you super done light. testing with inserts and you found an insert that you love? And I want to know this for me personally, because I'm thinking about rolling inserts at nationals later in September. Yeah. Um, so what insert have you tried or did you just pick one and just stuck with it the whole time yeah so um i do have two different inserts one for the back wheel and one for the front wheel so my yeah my front wheel it's a victoria okay they're pre they're pretty light they're really light okay mainly the victoria and tubo lights are the most popular um xc okay xc ones and then my back wheel is a cush core one it's more bulky, but you know, you have a lot more pressure on the back end of your bike. Right. So I ran a little heavier one, a little chunky one, but I didn't flat my back tire. So what percentage of your competitors are running um, inserts at this point? I, I would say probably 65% mm, of them. That's a lot. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Um, I guess when you're running that, are you even bothering to take any flat repair equipment with you or are you just, you're no, just I never, I never carry any, uh, flat repairs with me. Okay. Um, I, I do see some people my age race with, uh, like a CO2 in their back pocket. Um, but I kind of, I risk it a little bit. Yeah. Nice. Um, I like it. Um, uh, okay. So you qualified in at fifth. Yep. And when's the next race? Like the next day, a couple of days. The later? day after, the day, day after. after. And so, yeah, I, I like the qualifiers because it allows you your legs to be opened up. Sure. Um, so sometimes you have to do like opener intervals the day before, but I like the qualifying because it's like a, a good opener, good race before. Yeah. Um, and so now it's race day. You know, people are racing for the stars and stripes. It's real. Real. Um. Yeah, and so the race goes off. I get a pretty good start. I'm going into the 
the um the single track by 10th wow um, okay yeah how much space how much how how was it like was it like winter park where it's uphill for like a half mile or yeah how, so how much how much, this, time, how much time or distance did you have to get to that first single track yeah so the start um is on like a gravelish road okay um you probably mm, not even a half a mile it's it's right there oh it's you're pinned right out the yeah gate. so you gotta it's just sprint to the start i mean since the start to the single track is it flat no it's uphill okay a lot of climbing on this course yeah um so i'm second row okay going into this um so i, I was pretty happy about that for sure um so yeah this sprint to the single track tent um right into rocks climbing rocks immediately okay and so um a lot of people were getting off running i had to get off and run even in tent just because it's just stacking up in front of you yeah and it's like it's even hard to make it when no one's in front of you is that, it's that, that gnarly of a wow climb yeah. yeah that's hard okay yeah it took me a couple of tries to even get it in practice okay so, yeah, that's that's gnarly. So yeah, I'm in I'm in tenth. Um, lap goes by. I'm feeling great. I start to move up a little bit. Ninth now. Um, yeah, we did three laps, I think three or four laps. Um, so I think three laps. And so now by this the third lap, I'm in sixth. I'm stoked. You know, podiums in front of me yeah um so i'm just hammering and then i did unfortunately have a crash oh dang w yeah which put me back to eighth okay um but after that crash it's a lot of people freak out when they crash in races so i don't usually crash in races but i've kind of just i always um imagine like the worst thing possible before the race so i know like how to think uh-huh um so i did like if i fought if i break a chain if i crash i'm gonna do this i'm gonna think that and so i just when i when you crash and you hit the ground you're just like oh my gosh right you're yeah. freaking out so you just have to you know breathe and just not freak out and stress mm -hmm. um so that's like a big thing and especially dealing with, Oh my, I just got passed. Right. Right. And so I'm an eighth I'm from the um, finish line. I just hold my position and then finish eighth. And so I was really proud of that. Nice. Heck yeah. Top 10 at nationals. Yeah. Of course. And crashing. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's cool. good for you. Okay. So Thank you. yeah, super cool super super cool and okay so now you're off to college this fall right yeah and so talk about that a little bit like what you're going to a school that offers bike racing mm -hmm. and like at what point in during high school were you thinking i wonder if i could go to college and race in college was that on your radar all along or um i'd in? say probably the beginning of last year Okay. Um, so when I did enter the junior category, okay. Um, I definitely thought college was an option. So the um, beginning of your senior year or the beginning of your junior junior year? The beginning of my junior year. Okay. Um, so and then you have to apply for the college the end of your first year as a junior. Okay. And so yeah, I did apply. Um, I got in, I was beyond excited. Um, especially this college, um, it's, I've been looking since my junior year, that was like my dream to get into this college. So remind us what the name of the college is again, Colorado Mesa university. And where is it located? Um, Grand Junction, Colorado. Okay. All right. Right by Moab. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. yeah, that's where the top racers race and. I'm just beyond honored to get to race there this uh, season. When does the collegiate season, when is that? Is that a fall sport, a spring sport, winter sport? What is it? Yeah, so it starts September. Oh, it's on. 
Yeah, the first race, September 2nd. Um, so I go there mid-August, and then I race it September 2nd. Um, so it's going to take some time to even get acclimated, right, Colorado? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I'll have about, you know, two weeks to okay. acclimate it, and then it's on collegiate You've already racing. met the coaches, I'm sure. and Yeah. And will you – be coached by them will you stay with your own coach how does that work at the college level um yeah so um applications are opening up right now um so i am talking with my coach right now um kind of discussing what i'm going to be doing mm -hmm. for the next year even mm -hmm. um but for now they're just kind of helping me plan out my schedule for the collegiate racing okay um because it goes on for about a month and then you take another off season after that yeah but yeah i just right now i'm sticking with my same coach nice. doing a training plan through there so and are there collegiate nationals this fall then yeah so collegiate nationals is shortly after the last collegiate race um so yeah and there is collegiate nationals is that something you're shooting for this year is it longer range how, how does how does that look for you yeah so it's it's pretty hard to go to nationals as a freshman okay. um but that's one of my goals is to be able to race nationals collegiate nationals as a freshman um because you're you're racing you know the junior the sophomores yeah. the seniors in college right yeah there are a lot so of yeah yeah all right do you have a major picked out yet for for school for business. business business major yeah nice all right well dude i'm super excited for you it's been fun for me to watch the little grom yeah progress, right from afar like well, it's not like we train together ever um but i've seen you around and randomly in the middle of breckenridge and it's been really fun to see your progress and i'm super pumped for you um i'm going to send this out to my local nika team just so they can uh, share it with the kids there and i think this is really great and i wish you like all the best luck i hope you'll check in with us yeah and um yeah any parting words or words of advice to young? yeah what give us some words of advice for a younger racer words of advice mm. it's just you just have to fortify your mind and to just believe in believe in yourself that's the most important thing in this sport believe in yourself do you have any tricks any anything you do to not that we want you to give away your secrets but are there <laughs> any is there any any books or trainings you'd point um any athlete too, not not just kids too, to to fortify their mind. Um, yeah. So, this like, I do read motivational books. Okay. Um, I could, I could get the book right now. Yeah, get it. Let's see it. Yeah. Now we're getting the good stuff. No, I'm just kidding, but I'm excited to see this. Um, where is it at? Oh, it's right here. And that chair looks like it belongs on a Star Wars set. <laughs> so this one right here, let's see this one. The Champion's Mind. Oh, that's yeah. Cool. Never heard of that. So The Champion's Mind by Jim Aframo. Okay. Um, so I, I read this a lot, um, mostly when races are coming up to so just kind of get my mind in the right place. You just pick it up and thumb through it to pages you've maybe folded the page over or underlined. Yeah, or... yeah, exactly. And you know, even highlight the quotes you like in the in the do book. You do you have a favorite quote? Yeah. Let's see. Um... Let's see. Let's see. Oh, I can't find it. I did put it in my phone. I'll read you this quote. I right. I like this is I read it this quote 
when it's race day. Okay. So it's success is a peace of mind, which is a direct result of self-satisfaction and knowing you made the effort to do your best to become the best that you are capable of becoming. I love it. All right. Yeah. I love it. All right. On that note, we will end the call here. And thanks so much. You're awesome. Thank you. Hey, everybody. These podcasts and vlogs are new for Pedal Industries. So if you're enjoying them, please like and subscribe and share with your friends. Thanks so much. Keep challenging yourself.